So under this product management, this is a very, very broader perspective, you can say. And under that, you have multiple role specialization. There are four roles are basically applicable inside the product management. So if you divide this complete segment into four different quadrants, first is strategic, where it is taking care of the company's decision, what the company is going to do in uh, next one year to five years down the line, that is called as strategic. Then coming to the technology that is called as engineering. Then the operational, which is maintaining the, you can say availability of the product. And the last, the business development, which is taking care by the marketing and sales department. So if you take about the broader perspective in these four quadrant, the person who is ma managing the strategic decisions of the company and simultaneously ensuring the development of the product, this complete responsibility will be taken care by the product manager. Whereas the person who contributes toward the organization strategic decision and in parallel, they are accountable for generating the revenue for the company by selling the product into the market with the right price. That person is called as product marketer. Whereas the person who is actually go into the field and ensuring the penetration of the product to the right user at the right time, that person is a sales champion. And the person who is developing the product that is called as a technical champion, or you can say delivery manager or project manager, or you can say business analyst or complete engineering team will fall under this particular bucket. So you have four different buckets are there and they are overlapping with each other. But the main person lying is this product manager who is ensuring to generate the value and help to increase the organization strategic, and uh, you can say initiatives. That's how the different role coming into the picture. Let's go more deeper, especially these three major ones, strategic, marketing, and the engineering. If you go in further detail, you will get different varieties of roles available in the market. So if you talk about big MNC like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, or Accenture, they have different roles applicable based upon these three vertical uh, edges, like strategy, marketing, and technical. So product manager used to operate in this edge who is taking care of multiple, you can say, functions, whereas the product marketer is working on this edge, and whereas the technical person and the sales person are working on this particular edge. If you are working in a startup, then these roles will be managed by a single person that is called as product manager. But if you start working in a big MNC, then each and every person is specialized to handle a single role. That's how you can say the role you can say count increased automatically the moment the scale of the industries is, is increased. That's how the difference is coming up between the MNC and the startup under the vertical of the product management. So product management in itself is a very, very big vertical. And under this vertical, you have multiple roles. So let's discuss about more about this product management. In order to understand the product, let's have a clarity about the product lifecycle management. So what is this product lifecycle management? Just on higher side, I will tell you that we all are human beings, just like we, uh, you can say, born on one day and we die on another day. In that particular duration between the, uh, you can say, birth date and the death date, we have total our life expectancy of, of about 70 to 90 years. So we have our own age to survive in this planet. Similarly, every product is also having their product life cycle age. They come in market on one day and they absolute from the market on another day. This total duration is called as product life cycle time. So let's see the, on the clarity about product life cycle journey. So in order to understand this, let's have a clarity about the sales or revenue on the Y axis and on the X axis, suppose we take the time. So basically there are four stages involved in the product life cycle. First is called as the introduction. This introduction phase means the product has been developed from suppose getting the idea, then designing, then building, and then release, and then take off into the market means available in the market. This whole phase is basically called as introduction. This introduction phase is basically taken care by the technical team and on the, you can say initial side, the business development team. Here, the sales volume is very less because product is recently introduced into the market and you have to compete with the, you can say few amount of the competitors, but there is a huge level of uncertainty involved. Your product may be successful, your product may be proven, proven as a disaster. So initially, your marketing strategy will be different. So you have to put yourself into the aggressive strategy so that the customers will become aware as much as they can, so that the launch will be successful and product should be available across all distribution channels. That's why risk is very high 
during the takeoff phase. The moment it it is it has taken off into the market, slowly slowly it will start picking up the growth. Growth means in terms of getting the sales volume from the market through the customers, and the moment you pick up the growth, immediately your you are competing with the existing customers, and the competition will become increase, and automatically your profit will start also increasing. And now the company focus is automatically change under this growth plan. Earlier they have to focus on aggressive marketing and campaigning. but here now they have to focus on adding as much features as possible and if any customer is not satisfied they will take the feedback and put into consideration with utmost seriousness so that none of the customer will be you can say leave the company and they will spread good word of mouth to the rest of the customers after some point of time you will achieve the peak stage and thereafter you will have a no further uh, peak observed in the market this phase is called as maturity or you can say it is somewhat uh, looking like a saturation stage where profit margins are very high but no further peak will be observed but now here the marketing strategy of the company will be automatically change now they have to not only uh, you can say acquire new customer but satisfy the existing customers also because if you lose one customer it will detract six different customers and it's very difficult to attract a new customer because you have to pay some Uh, something extra to acquire a new customer so sometime you need to invest more than 10 time force to acquire a new customer because the new customer is not sitting idle and thereafter the last phase will come up which is called a decline where the new technology has evolved in the market your product become out, outdated and in due consideration of time you will get lower profit margin you are not able to no longer allowed to compete with existing customers and the last moment will come up where unfortunately you have to take a call to declare the decline phase of the product and no further upgradation or enhancement need to be made these are the four stages involved in the product life cycle management and doesn't matter whether this product is a retail e-commerce ad tech or fintech or you can say uh, uh, you can say saas product it can be anything every product will follow the same life cycle journey and companies are basically focusing on to increase the time as much as they can especially product manager has to focus on increasing the timeline so that you will get maximum sales as much as they can so if you take the total area under this curve this will give you the total revenue acquired through the particular product this is the art and science of developing the product and getting maximum profit from a particular product but this is from the organization perspective 